Hi again, everyone. So this is going to be our second video on the topic of integer programming. More specifically, we're still looking at binary variables. I'm going to assume that you have watched the video that comes right before this one, the first one on budget allocation, aka the knapsack problem. If you haven't watched that video, please do that first. I'm going to put a link to it down in the description of this video below and as well as up here on the screen the top right hand side corner all right so if you recall we um, solved this budget allocation problem with the binary variables that decided whether or not to pick each of these advertising channels in order to maximize the overall reach how many people see the ads for the product and stay within the budget. And uh, our answer was this, right? So the ones indicate which channels we picked, how much money we spent out of our budget, and what, how many people actually saw the ads. Now, let's go ahead and do the following. With these yes-no decision variables, we can implement a few additional constraints to capture some situations that might be part of the real-life problem we are interested in solving. And these are called logical conditions. They are conditions that typically will involve some sort of if-then-else situation or some type of counting situation. Let me show you a few examples. Here we go. Um, Consider the following things, uh, and I have like five bullets here. Let's go through them one at a time. If you notice here, the solution we obtained without any additional constraints advertises on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven channels. Let's say that for some reason the client says, no, that's too much or too many. I would like to restrict the advertisement to four different channels at the most so that it's not too many over it. so they may have a reason to request something like this another typical example of this type of, of constraint is let's say you're building a portfolio of stocks and if you just solve the plain optimization problem you get a solution that you know invests into 200 stocks many of which could be very little money in them so maybe you want to impose, you know what, give me the best portfolio that uses only, let's say, 30 stocks. So you want to count how many times you are doing something and limit that number. This is one situation where you need the binary variables. And we have them here already. And we simply have to count. Well, when you add binary variables together, interestingly, because they are zero ones, what you get as a result is always going to be how many yeses there were. So if you add binary variables together and you limit that sum to a number, you are essentially limiting how many yeses can there be. And in this case, the client said, I wanted the most four yeses out of these potential 11 yes-no variables. Right now, as we counted, we have seven. That's why there's seven here. So in that cell, I simply summed them. So I could go to solver and add one more constraint by simply saying, you know, the sum of the binaries is at the most what I want to allow for, okay? And if I solve this, what I'm going to get as a result is the collection of the four best ads that stay within my budget and reach as many people as possible. Okay, so, and here they are, all right? It's these two magazines, this first social media ad and the first TV. And that's the best you can do if you're restricting yourself to four, okay? So let me go back to the other, the initial solution because the following logical con uh, constraint examples I want to show you uh, will be more, uh, more meaningful if we have the, the bigger solution at hand. So here we are. We were, this was our previous solution. And notice 
the solution with the best four ads is not a subset of the solution with the best seven ads. And this may be a little counterintuitive for some people, because notice the solution with four ads was using these two magazines, wasn't it? Um, and this one isn't. So they can be very different when you start restricting how many yeses you can have. All right, so let's take a look at another example. Uh, here's a condition of the type, if this, then that. And it says the following, if we advertise on channel two, then we also have to advertise on channel three. Okay, right now you see this is not happening, right? Um, I'm doing channel two, but not channel three. Well, and if this, then that condition, right? If channel two, then channel three, right? If x2 is one, then x3 has to be one, right? If this is a yes, then the second one has to be a yes. If this is what you want, um, there is a way to write this down as a formula. We're going to deduce this in class, but for now, I'm just going to use the one directly because we don't have too much time. If we have a condition like this and the x's are, and I don't know why this is coming up red, but that's okay. If the x's are binary variables, the formula for it is always going to be this one. If you want to do, if this certain thing is a yes, then this other thing is also a yes. The formula will always be the binary of the first thing less than or equal to the binary of the second thing because this essentially disallows the first one from being a one and the second one from being a zero because one is not less than zero. Okay, No matter what the story is, what the situation is, if you have two binaries and you want if this, then that, it is always going to be this formula, the x of the first thing less than or equal to the x of the second thing. Our next one is a mutually exclusive example. And it says if you advertise on channel 6, then you can't advertise on channel 8. And you see we're violating that as well here. Right? We're advertising on both 6 and 8. So if what you want to write is the following, and let me copy this to save some time. The second thing I want is if you do six, right? If you do six, then you can't do eight, right? This is what the story says there. So essentially what you want is if six is a yes, then eight has to be a zero. The formula for this, and it's generic like the previous one, no matter what the situation, if you have two yes-no decisions and you want them to be mutually exclusive, that is, if one happens or if one is a yes, the other one has to be a no, your formula will always be this, the sum of the two binaries at most one, because what you want to eliminate is the yes-yes answer, right? The one-one. So one plus one would be two, which is not okay for this formula. So this formula is excluding, right? the yes, yes answer. Well, if you wanted to put these into solver, you simply implement them as they are written here. So let me just show you, for example, if we wanted to enforce these in this particular example, we would do this. We want x2, oh, who is x2? x2 is a c3, right? Less than or equal to, and x3 is c4. That would implement the if this, then that condition. And the other one is we want to say, well, in fact, in this case, because there's a formula here, we need to first produce this formula in Excel. So let me get out of here and go ahead and do it. So here I'm going to create the x6 plus x8 expression. x6 is c7. x8 is c9, right? And this is what I want to make less than or equal to one. Right now it's a two, so it's violating the requirement. If you go into solver, I could go ahead and say one more constraint that says, hey, this number has to be at the most to one, right? So I have imposed these two additional conditions in red or constraints, which are currently violated by this solution. So the new solution 
will of course be different. Let's see what happens. I have no idea if this is going to work because it might generate some contradiction, but I don't think so. We'll see. Um, yeah, so here we go. Let's see if it respected what we wanted. Budget is respected. Okay, good. We have the following. X2 is a zero. So I, I chose to do neither. Uh, if you have to do if two, then three, the answer is in neither. And if you do six, you can't do eight. And here we are not doing six, but are doing eight, which again is, you know, obeying this requirement. So we are good here. And uh, our maximum reach is a, a million six hundred and three thousand people. And we have matched the budget. And we are now advertising on five channels instead of seven. Great. Let's see if there, I think there's a few more here. Ah, yeah, the, this is, this fourth bullet <clears throat> is the third most common type of logical condition that you might encounter in a real life problem from my, my personal experience, right? So these first two are very common. If this, then that, if this, then not that. The third one that I would say is the third most common is this one that involves three variables. And this one says, if you advertise on channels three and four, okay, if you do these two things, then you must also do a third thing, which is advertise on channel 10. So this is an if this and that, right? So if, if you advertise on three, and you advertise on four, then you have to advertise on channel 10. And this one, again, we could do some calculations and, and try to deduce what the formula will be, but I'm just gonna give it to you as I did with the other ones. And the idea is um, the following. What you want to avoid or enforce is that if both three and four are equal to one, and let me make this red so that it's consistent with everything else. If both three and four are equal to one, X10 doesn't have a choice. It must be one as well, right? If you did yes, yes, you wanna force X10 to be a yes. And the way this formula makes that happen is this. Look, notice that if this is a one, one, I have a two but I have a less than or equal to one. So this guy here doesn't have a choice because I need to do two minus one to satisfy the less than or equal to one. So when you put one and one here, X10 is forced to be one. And in any other situation, no matter what you put in three and four, zero, 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 one, one, zero, you're not gonna need to force X10 to be anything. X10 is free to be any value, okay? So if you ever face this third situation, again, no matter what the story is or context, financial context, marketing context, doesn't matter. You have three binary variables. If two of them are yes, a third one has to be yes. This will always be the formula to use so you can add that to your utility belt that you carry around with you to model optimization problems in real life. Excellent. Let me see, I think there's a one final example I wanted to do with you. And um, again, let me go back to the original solution because this will make more sense if we go back there. And then we'll, that'll be the end of this video. So I'm gonna remove this one and I'm gonna remove this one. And we just stay with the original. I think I removed the wrong thing, right? Yes, probably. So let me just add it back. I just need to add the budget constraint back. I already had the binary constraint. And if we solve this, let's just make sure we go back to the first answer. Yes, okay, so here we are. And the last example of one of these conditions that I wanna use with, do with you is the following. The client looks at, this, looks at this answer and goes, you know what? 
I really wanted to have an ad on a magazine and you coming back with no magazine ad and I think two radio ads is too many of the same type so I want to add more diversity to this could you find me an answer that picks one of the two radios I don't care which and also picks one of the two magazines I don't care which and give, give me the best answer that satisfies those two requirements right Client wants exactly one magazine and one radio ad. Great, so what you could do here is the following. You could say, uh, they call this one radio, one mag, right? So essentially what you want is you want these two variables here to be one of them one and the other one zero, right? So you want the sum of them to be equal to one. You don't want the sum to be two because that will be two yeses. And you don't want the sum to be zero because that would be two no's. So what you would like is you would like this variable plus this variable, right, to equal one. And same thing for the two magazines. You want this variable plus this variable to equal one, right? So the constraints you have imposed, mathematically speaking, are x4 plus x5 equals 1 and x10 plus x11 equals 1. And notice that the current solution violates this one because now you had two yeses and you want one yes. And it violates this one because you wanted one yes and you have no yeses for magazines. Now let's implement these constraints in solver and solve again just to see what happens out of curiosity. Uh, let me add them here. And I'm going to say I want these two things to equal these two things here. And if we solve that, let's take a look and see what happens. And again, this is going back to that thing that I mentioned all the time. As you solve these optimization models, you never solve them only once because you run them once and you look at an answer and you start to have other questions and you learn something about your problem you realize, you know what, now that I see this, I really want to have one radio and one magazine, right? And then you add some extra detail, solve again, gain more insights, and keep going. And this is the nice thing about having these models, like because you can play with them, change the data, learn about your problem, and eventually, you know, converge to a, a solution that really satisfies your needs. So let's see what happens here. We, as we wanted, we obeyed right the conditions we imposed. There's exactly one radio and one magazine. And the solver picked them in such a way that we would still remain within the budget, which we did, and we maximized the reach. Now we are now reaching a million five hundred and forty one thousand people, and these are the ads we should advertise on. okay? So this pretty much covers the examples of logical conditions involving binary variables that I wanted to do with you. It's a very powerful. Um, elements to add to your optimization models, the idea of yes-no decisions. They're extremely um, pervasive in real-life applications and with the addition of logical conditions, uh, it takes your models to the next level. Before we finish, I wanted to make one final comment uh, that it's something that comes up whenever I teach this, which is, well, this is an if-then condition. Why can't I just use the Excel if function, right? If, I could do that. If this variable equal one, right? Then this variable equal one. That's an if-then in Excel. Why do I have to implement it like this as opposed to like this? Well, the reason is the following. This formula here is a linear formula, right? It, if you were to plot the set of solutions that satisfies that formula, they are on a plane. Uh, if you add this formula to your Excel model, it transforms your model into a nonlinear model because 
an if function is not a linear function. What is a consequence of that? Well, the consequence of that is the following. Uh, Excel Solver, if you have all your constraints linear, it allows you to use it allows you to use the solver that we've been using called the Simplex LP. Right? This solver guarantees that it will find for you the optimal solution. If you have to change your model to include nonlinear functions such as the if function, the max function, or some other you know, uh, more complicated calculations such as uh, square roots and logarithms and things like that, you then have to switch from the linear solver to the nonlinear solver, and the nonlinear solver in Excel does not guarantee anymore that it can get you to the best solution, and it doesn't even guarantee that it can get you to a good solution. So whenever you can avoid a nonlinear formula in a model by replacing it with a smart linear formula that does the same job, you should always do that because this allows you to keep your model easy to solve. That is, you can use the linear solver and besides guaranteeing an optimal solution, it also solves more quickly and is also able to solve larger versions of your problem more quickly. Whereas the nonlinear one has no guarantee of optimality and can only solve much smaller versions of the problem. Okay, so that's uh, what I wanted to emphasize here because it's everybody's first thought, why not the if function of Excel? And now you know why. All right, once again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you back here um, in the next video. Bye-bye.